Welcome. I'm Ken Foldis of St. John's University, and my job description is teacher of the end of history and kingdom come now. We are teaching the complete system of Hegel's philosophical science or absolute science. That is the introduction, the science of logic, the science of nature, and the science of spirit, and which will be taught in all the world's schools and universities and will replace, yet preserve, all existing sciences on the planet. The philosophy or science of nature that we will be teaching in this module is the third science of the system. The purpose of these lectures is to provide you with the basic tools that will enable you to understand Hegel's science of nature. There will be eight lectures with four parts to each lecture. Lecture one, today's lecture, will be an introduction and overview. Lecture two will treat mechanics, lectures three and four, physics, and lectures five through eight will treat organics and the transition to the science of spirit, the idea or concept fully actualized. Today's topics will be one, the history of philosophy and the genesis of absolute science. What absolute science is and how it works and the science of nature's place within absolute science. Two, the key to understanding the science of nature, or what exactly happens in the science of nature. And three, a summary of the contents of the three parts of the science of nature, mechanics, physics, and organics. Okay, to begin. Absolute science is simply the science of the absolute or the absolute science or knowledge of itself. What is crucial to understand is that there is only one reality, or that reality is absolutely one. Thus, the history of the world and the history of philosophy is nothing but this one reality, the absolute, becoming conscious of itself. And for more on this, you should consult Hegel's History of Philosophy and the Jedi Handbook of Global Education, Part 1. Reality is absolutely one. The history of philosophy is the genesis or coming to be of absolute science which began in ancient Greece with the search for the arche, the principal source and ground of all things. Up until Descartes, we witness an objective arche, one outside of ourselves. With Descartes' Meditations, 1641, we begin to have a subjective arche, one within ourselves. Consciousness, or thought, is recognized as reality. With Kant, Fichte, Schelling, and Hegel, we reach the final true arche, the absolute I, or concept, and philosophy becomes science, and history comes to an end. It was Plato's divided line which gave the key to the whole process and task. Simply put, there is not one, but two regions of reality. That of the senses, the many, separateness, which Plato called appearance or illusion or the cave, and that of reason, the one, and the good, which Plato calls reality. The good is Plato's arche, 
And the goal of life is simply to exit the cave, the many, and to know and merge and become one with the good, the one indivisible reality, which in the final analysis alone exists. It is Fichte's absolute I and Hegel's absolute concept, the basis of absolute science, which is nothing but the study of the absolute I becoming conscious of itself. As Hegel says, the absolute, quote, is essentially a result. So then, how does absolute science work? And what is nature's function and place within it? In brief, we start with the introduction. The introduction to science. Since science presupposes, quote, that we have overcome the opposition of consciousness and its object or the world. That we have exited Plato's cave of illusion, multiplicity, and separation, and have realized absolute knowing, or our oneness with reality, or the absolute, and now know that the concept or thought is alone reality. As Hegel says, quote, the concept is alles, or everything. The concept is the absolute truth and all truth, and it is the foundation and essence of logic, nature, and spirit. In a word, we first have the concept as pure thought in logic, and then, because of polarity or the unity of opposites, or because you cannot have one thought, the inner, without the other thoughts opposite, we necessarily and immediately have nature, the outer, externality, extension, or the concept outside of itself as space, time, and matter. Then finally, the unity of the opposites thought and nature, namely spirit or ourselves. The concept returned into itself and fully actualized what our religions call God and kingdom come. As Hegel spells this out in the science of logic's final category, the idea which moves from life, nature's highest form, to man, that is finite knowledge, theoretical and practical, our attempts to bring the knower and the world together to God or kingdom come, to the realization of the truth that the knower ourselves and the world or universe are already and eternally one and inseparable. But this is God or kingdom come only in thought. Nature and spirit are necessary to make it a reality. In the end, only spirit remains having absorbed logic and nature within itself as their unity. Thus, we see that nature, being the concept outside of itself, in a state of contradiction, must ultimately set itself aside and completely overcome or cancel its externality, which it does as we shall see. Now, what is the key to understanding the science of nature? Well, we just indicated what it is. 
But at paragraph 381 in the Science of Spirit, Hegel expresses it quite simply and beautifully when he says, Nature has vanished. Spirit being the truth, the sole truth of nature. This means that one, in the end, in the final analysis, in truth, nature, matter, and all its forms are nothing. They have no true being, or as Hegel says, are ideal, which is the true meaning of absolute idealism. Simply put, quote, the real nature is ideal, and the ideal spirit, mind, thought is real. Nature has vanished also means that in the science of nature, we move gradually by stages from space, externality, and gravity, where no two points coincide, to the opposite, to the soul, interiority, spirit, where all points coincide, that is, to absolute unity. Another key to the science of nature is, since logic's concept is the absolute truth and true reality, and nature is simply the immediate manifestation of the concept, albeit outside of itself, we can expect to find the concept and its moments, universality, particularity, individuality, within nature and its various forms. And here is revealed the most important key to understanding nature, which Hegel expresses in paragraph 270's Zusatz, or commentary, Miller, page 80. Quote, In nature's first process, the solar system, the concept's differences, UPI, enjoy a free, separate existence as the sun, the planet, the moon, and comets. We shall pursue, says Hegel, the solar, planetary, lunar, and cometary natures through all the further stages of nature. Indeed, the deepening of nature is nothing but the progressive transformation of these four. Let us now summarize the contents of the three parts of the science of nature, namely mechanics or matter, U, physics or qualified matter, P, and organics, living qualified matter, I. Mechanics for matter and motion, the deduction of matter, and the solar system is divided into one, space, time, motion, matter, two, finite mechanics or relative motion, inert matter, thrust, and falling, and three, absolute mechanics or absolutely free motion, gravitation, and the solar system. Physics is divided into, one, universal individuality, the four qualities, the four elements, and meteorology, or the process of the four elements. Two, particular individuality, the moment of difference where bodies get distinguished from each other by their specific gravity or density, their cohesion, sound, and heat. And three, the total individuality, shape and magnetism, color, odor, taste, and electricity, and chemism, qua combination and dissociation. Finally, organics is divided into one, the geological or terrestrial organism, 
the history, structure, and life of the earth to the plant or vegetable organism, formation, assimilation, and reproduction, and finally three, the animal organism, shape or structure, assimilation, and the genus process or sex relation. Organics ends with the death or negation of the mere individual and the transition and becoming of spirit, thought, and the universal. Tomorrow we will take up the first division of the science of nature, or what is the same, the becoming of spirit and the absolute truth, the one realities, self-awareness, also known as kingdom come, namely mechanics and its three parts, space, time, motion, matter, finite mechanics, and absolute mechanics. Thank you. See you tomorrow.